Hey guys, my name is Boris and I'm a computer engineering and computer science student at the Technical University of Berlin. And on this channel I want to talk about things that I have learned and might bring you value, general educational topics and lifestyle ones. I have finally finished my bachelor thesis and I wanted to show you guys what my work was all about and, well, what I did. I hope this video can demonstrate what such a thesis can look like and perhaps inspire you with some ideas of your own. Well, let's get started. The title of my thesis is Deployment and Evaluation of Deep Reinforcement Learning Based Navigation Approaches on Real Robots. So simply said it means get the developed models that were trained in simulation running on the real robot and then do an evaluation. Those models were developed using deep reinforcement learning. Along the lines of giving a child a positive feedback when learning to walk, a DOL agent is being trained by initially letting it perform random actions that are followed up by rewards. Through this constant feedback loop, the agent learns what actions are favorable in which situations. Since the training of such agents is usually executed in benign simulation environments, this approach offers multiple advantages such as theoretically limitless training data and the mitigation of potential safety hazards, but has also a relevant concern. There is a thing called the simp real gap, which describes the bandwidth of possible errors that occur when deploying a simulation trained model onto the real robot, since simulation and real world are two pretty different things. So, to assess this sim to real gap and determine relevant bottlenecks or issues with the previous work I am building on top, my thesis covers the development of a pipeline to transfer existing DOL based navigation approaches towards the real robot and then its evaluation. In particular, I had to do the following things. I had to set up necessary nodes for transmitting data of the real robot. Then implement a module for calculating subgoals that then publishes those provide pre-processing of data and preparing it for the model, refactor an existing script that executes the DOL-based local planner and customize it for real-world application through the robot visualization tool Arvis. Then extend the evaluation script to be able to work based on real-world scenarios and design three real-world scenarios for three maps respectively, then perform tests with three planners and record necessary data. Finally, I had to evaluate the experimental runs and compare the performance. Now, to take a step back again, before getting to the details, let's quickly talk about the conceptual design or idea of the navigation pipeline. The robot provides the essential data, such as scan and odometry, to the global planner that calculates the optimal global path. Since DRL-based models don't perform well given physically distant goals, a further module is included that provides a sub-goal based on a maximum horizon parameter, hence the name spatial horizon. Now the sub-goal, such as the scan and positional data, are prepared by the observation packer and subsequently fed into the model. Hereby the data is interpreted as observations and based on those the model predicts the next best action to take. The robot now executes this action, which leads to a transition into a new state with new sensor data, which is then propagated through the described pipeline. This constant action feedback loop is performed until the agent has reached its goal. Okay, after discussing the conceptual design, let's look at how some of the system modules are realized. As mentioned, some of the core characteristics of a DRL agent regarding autonomous navigation is its limited performance when the goal is too far away. To bypass this constraint, we provide an algorithm that chooses a sub-goal on the global path and publishes both. The idea hereby is to draw a circle with a fixed radius around the robot and choose the intersection with the global path nearest to the final goal as the desired sub-goal. During the research and working with the developed model, there were a few challenges that I had to address through pre-processing of the data. One of which was the finding that the scan data orientation in simulation didn't match the real robot's scan orientation. This was fixed by shifting the data in pre-processing or simply retraining the model respectively. Another important pre-processing step was the synchronization of scan and odometry data. This is necessary to provide data that is as accurate as possible, and the scan data read does in fact correspond to the respective odometry data. 
This was achieved through one of two methods, one being a synchronization algorithm provided by message filters and one being our own approach. Hereby, we simply compare if either the scan or ODOM data timestamp is older and too far apart. And if so, we'll pop a newer message of the respective older message. Finally, we provide the synchronized pair of messages. After providing and pre-processing the necessary data, the script that receives this data feeds it into the GRL model and then publishes the predicted linear and angular velocities. With the previous GRL-based planner setup, the localization of the agent's position, such as the goal's position, was performed through the use of Aruko markers and respective cameras. To remove this camera setup and integrate it into Arvis, the positional information of the robot was provided by a node called AMCL inside the map frame. So the positional coordinate with respect to a reference point in the map. The goal was then set in Arvis, which was also in the map frame. For this, the necessary data was provided and no further transformations were required. Finally, to be able to evaluate the evaluation runs, the respective script had to be refactored. This script was based on simulation and automated runs, which, well, I didn't have. The last major contribution of this work was the extensive design and execution of evaluation runs. For those, I recorded a large static map through SLAM mapping. On this base map, I then designed three submaps by placing static obstacles, like boxes for example, and defining three new starting positions respectively. Hereby, the target goal was kept the same throughout. On each of those maps, three scenarios were constructed by arranging dynamic obstacles. The number of those dynamic obstacles and all the paths they follow differ for each scenario. An important consideration made is that those dynamic obstacles are in fact humans and also interact with the robots as such, meaning they will avoid them when crossing paths. Moreover, this leads to no failed runs in form of collisions, but only timeouts. Lastly, for each scenario, three planners were run five times each, our DRL-based planner called Arena and the other two classical planners DWA and TEB. In total, 135 runs were recorded and evaluated. If we now look at the results of map 1, we can see that our arena planner outperforms the two competitors. Regarding scenario 1, arena travels the shortest distance and this at the highest average velocity, thus having the shortest average travel time. Scenario 2 only emphasizes this performance difference. The DRL agent reaches its desired final destination in about half the time of 54 seconds compared to the classical planners with 102 and 110 seconds respectively. In all three scenarios, no timeouts occurred. Looking at the qualitative plot, those little markers or circles represent the robot's position every three seconds. Now, qualitatively speaking, we can see the similar paths taken by all planners. It is not only visible that the arena planner travels closer alongside the static obstacles, which leads to a shorter path, but is also not affected as much by the dynamic obstacles. On the other hand, the stacking of multiple orange markers over the same area here illustrates the recalibration or recovery period needed by DWA, or as shown in the video by TEB. Through such periods, the planners oscillate back and forth, which adds to the path covered. The second map consists of a path where the robot has to exit a room and enter the same corridor as in map 1. The upper hand in performance of the arena planner is similarly impressive as in map 1, yet additionally the robustness of each planner becomes evident on this map. Looking at scenario 2, the average time graph suggests a significant performance advantage of the arena planner compared to the classical planners, yet although of course having its significance, the evidence time delta can be attributed to the three timeouts DWA and four timeouts TB suffered. The qualitative plot for scenario 2 illustrates very well where those timeouts occurred. We can here see a clustering of DWA and TB markers because a dynamic obstacle stepped in front of it and remained there. Whilst Arena managed to drive through the narrow path still open, the classical planners oscillated back and forth and eventually aborted and were classified as a timeout. We'll just skip map 3 because it's similar anyway and this video would be too long. 
But yeah, those are the results or the most interesting parts of my hard work. It was quite a lot of work and those 135 final evaluation runs took like three days with up to four people who had to function as well dynamic obstacles. But that wasn't like really hard of course because we could just chill more or less, walk around and talk. But still at one point it did get a bit repetitive and annoying and every one of my dynamic obstacles had their own work to do as well. There were of course a few more findings that could be fixed eventually with a bit more work, but you can always continue your work and advance or improve it. But at one point you will have to draw a line and actually write the thesis and finish it. Those things that are left will be then part of your future work section. Now I have made three vlog videos where I document my process and I've put them in a playlist that you can click up here. I hope you've enjoyed this video, learned something new and it could demonstrate you what such a thesis could perhaps look like. And if so, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that said, as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!